Thank you. All rise and uh, the pledge of allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> okay, roll call to establish a quorum. Supervisor Linda Waite. Here. Vice Chairman John Stavinus. Here. Supervisor Jim Nellen. Here. Supervisor Tony Hain. Here. And Chairman Dan Wolfel is excused. Okay, we'll go on to the meet and greet. Amy, would you like to start that? Amy Flock, Clerk Treasurer, County Road P. Tony Hain, Town Supervisor, <coughs> Matthew Road. Jim Nellen, uh, Town Supervisor, Lori Lane. John Stavnes, Town Supervisor, Whitefish Bay Road. Linda Waite, Town Board Supervisor, Bluff Court. <laughs> Steve Tipler, candidate for town chairman, Bellamy Road. John Deal, Whitefish Bay Road. Stevie Larwell, Rip Road. Corey Lehman, Rip Road. Holly Moline, 15th Avenue and Sturgeon Bay. Mike Jarman, Deckel Road. Tim Denham, Sturgeon Bay Fire Chief. Mary Ellen Hain, Matthew Road. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any public participation on non-agenda items? Yes, John. Can we uh, think about addressing the speed limit entering Bellamy from Whitefish Bay Road? Um, Saturday afternoon, unfortunately, the person that was speeding isn't here tonight. Um, came through a 35-mile-an-hour zone at the minimum. 50 miles an hour according to the radar app. Um, that zone starts beyond uh, 4293 Whitefish Bay Road. And it runs all the way down to the corner by my shop. Something needs to be done about the speeds there. And that's coming from? From Whitefish Bay Dock, coming down towards Valley. Okay. Uh, it's 35 now. Uh, it really needs to be addressed down to about 25. There's too many kids a lot of kids, and the houses are close. Like I said, something needs to happen there before somebody gets killed. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Anything else? There's two versions. There's two versions of it. We went through this numerous times. Okay. Valmy Road is just as bad, and there's no speed limit. There's no speed limit sign on Valmy Road at all. Yeah, because I think the county, the county road is in front of the Viva or the Happy Road, right? Mm -hmm. It's always a question when it gets into Valmy. It, it's always a question, but like I said, something. If I can't bring the questions to you guys, I'm not going to waste my time going to the company. No, uh, we can look into it, and whether it's county or not, we can address the county too. So. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anything else? Okay, moving right along. Um, is the agenda properly noticed? The agenda was properly noticed. Okay, can I have an adoption to approve the agenda? I move the adoption of the agenda. I second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Approval of the minutes from <coughs> Town Board Supervisors meeting December 17, 2018. I will move to approve the minutes of December 17, 2018. I did forward a couple comments to Amy after I took a careful look and mm -hmm. just a little bit of clarification on the Love Court Trail thing. So Thank I would you. move to I would move to approve those minutes. I second that. Okay, first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Pending business, we have the schedule, 2019 meeting schedule. It's the last updated one. Are there any other changes that we know of right now? Nope, the only change was the um, clerk 
the July meeting that I had to change um, because of my schooling, and Linda said that she would do the packet and the agenda with dance or whoever is in office at that point. So um, that should be all set to go. Okay. So we're just missing, um, actually it should be the 2020 budget work session then, right? <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're, yes, we're missing I will. A, we, didn't, we haven't decided yes. on a date yet, but you're absolutely right. In the 2020 budget public hearing. Yep. Um, I got a question. That uh, board of review is uh, open book. I'm sorry. Friday the 31st. Is that uh, Memorial Weekend? Mm -hmm. I think it is, isn't it? Last weekend of May. Well, our assessor usually picks that date, so um, he chose the dates of the mm -hmm. board of review and the um, open book. Ryan, Ryan Anderson. I mean, is that? Um, it's the week so after. Oh, it's the week after? Mm -hmm. Okay. Memorial Day is the 27th. All right, cool. Because, you know, I was just going to say, you know, if it's Memorial Weekend, you know, people are not going to screw it up or no. All right. Okay. Okay. Do we need a motion on that? Or just a No, I'll Keep make those the changes um, of the 2020 um, budget work session, the 2020 budget public hearing, and we should be all good. Okay. Okay. <coughs> okay, now we'll move on to new business. And we have the Mill Supper Club, LLC, the liquor license. Has any, everything been posted? Everything has been posted. Um, Corey Lehman came to me mid to early um, December with his request to get a Class B alcohol license for the Mill Supper Club, which he currently has taken ownership of. And um, everything has been posted, the dues have been paid, he's not outstanding with anything, he did move back to the area, not that that's an issue, um, because he did, with, did live in Wisconsin. Um, so he should be all set um, to be approved as long as you see fit. Okay. All right, um, I have a motion on the liquor license. I move that we approve the uh, <clears throat> alcohol beverage license uh, to Corey Lehman uh, uh, operating the Mill Supper Club. I'll second that motion. That would be a, for a combination. Um, it's not marked on here, but it would be a combination uh -huh. class B beer, fermented and malt, and intoxicated liquors, correct? Correct. Okay, and that all the fees have been paid and background checks and all the paperwork's in order. Absolutely. Okay, so there's a motion and a second. So all in favor say aye. 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 Anybody oppose? <coughs> Congratulations. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> okay, burning permit changes discussion. Um, this is going to be finalized at our next meeting. This is just here for information. Um, Dan and Tim had a discussion over the town supervisors not issuing burn permits anymore, that it would be done by the fire department. And how that would work is the residents would call the fire department, they would come out and inspect what is to be burned, decide if a permit is appropriate, and of course, you know that the fire department is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365. I mean, it says here that roughly maybe an hour they could be out there, but depending upon their workload and stuff. And if any of the supervisors or Amy issues a burning permit until our next meeting, um, we should call the fire department right away and let them go out and inspect what is to be burned. So, and if we have any questions, we have the fire chief from Sturgeon Bay, Tim Detman, <coughs> for information and any explanation that he would like to add to that. I got a couple questions. Okay. <clears throat> uh, did he, what do the other towns do, Tim? Everybody does a little bit different. But the majority of townships in the county, the fire departments do issue mm -hmm. permits. <clears throat> okay, I, I read this, just quick read this letter again. Um, I, I give out a lot of permits because mm -hmm. I'm at home all the time. I don't know how many permits the other supervisors give out, but 
and then you're done with my book already. Uh, you know, and I wrote, <clears throat> Honor, you're know, going to be so big. I think you had told me that. I wrote it, so I read it. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I agree we don't have, how do I know if, uh, you know, Maddie's got a fire and all of as big as a house. <clears throat> but um, so that's a problem, but then you guys go and look at it, give out the permit. They can still, if they're going to add to it, they're still going to add to it whether I give it to them or you do. But then are you saying you've got more of a, what do you mean, more of a jurisdiction, it'd be easier to find them? You know what I'm getting at? Um, I have no problem giving out permits, but if it takes the liability off our back, maybe it's a good thing. You know, yeah. Yeah. We've had a couple, uh, yeah. three or four of them in the last few months where uh, they went through the process, obtained a permit. One that Amy had, they were told they were going to burn some brush and a few barn boards that ended up being um, quite a bit more than that to the point where we spent probably about five hours and 6,500 gallons of water and 20 gallons of foam. Um, so it's just, you know, as you said, Tony, that, you know, you, you can issue a permit. Uh, there's really nothing saying that we go out there. Our, our process is, um, I've given Amy a sheet. It's just a paper cap. We do everything electronically, like we do our fire inspections. Part of the permit, um, process for us and we go out and take a look at it, we fill this permit out on our tablet, take a picture of what they're burning so that it gets put in with the permit that they receive electronically. Uh, we provide Amy back to town a copy of that permit we were issuing them to. You're right, nothing to say as soon as we leave somebody doesn't throw a bunch of tires and <coughs> a load of wood on there. But if that does happen and we get called out there we've got documentation of what it was when we looked at it, the size of the pile and what was what was supposed to be burnt. Um, if it's not what it was and they've added to it, we'll extinguish it and have an officer issue a citation for illegal burning. So, right. so if I uh, if I call for a permit, you know, you guys have to come out to issue it. You're going to do that what, you know, within a couple of hours and try to get some of your equipment. You know, you know I mean, I, yeah, I mean, we're, we were staffed 24 7, so we've got guys, unless we're out on calls. Um, All right. Historically, then we've gotten a call for a burning permit, the guys have gotten a truck and taken off. So you know, 15 or 20 minutes. That's why I said, you know, up to an hour, depending on if we're finishing up something or if the guys are inspecting or whatever, but um, the only downside would be is if we're in the middle of a large call and somebody calls for a permit, it's gonna be a little bit hard for us to get away, but um, you know, for, for the most part, people aren't sitting there with a match in their hand waiting to burn it, you know, getting a permit, you know, they, they know to get a hold of it. Thanks. You want to go kind of step by step how the process would work? So right now, and how it works now is uh, the town issues a permit. Part of the requirement is that the permit holder has to contact us, let us know they're going to be burning. So all it would be is somebody call and call the station, say, uh, you know, I live in the town's basketball. There's my address. I'd like to uh, obtain a burning permit. We'll send the truck out there. They'll take a look at what they're going to burn. Um, the burn permit, the sheet that, this is, again, this is just a paper copy, somebody doesn't use email, we can we can write one of these up too. Tells you what you can burn, what you can't burn, the size, um, combustion clearances around it. So we've, very, you know, on, on our form it says billable amount, there's no there's no invoicing part of it, it's just part of our form that we can't take that off of. Um, so there's no, no fee or anything for it. Um, they receive a, a permit, they sign on our tablet, we can email them. If they don't do email, we can do a paper copy. They sign that, we sign it, and uh, that's it. So they've got their permit. <coughs> now, how we've issued permits in the past in the city, um, and it makes it easier for us, we, we've done them daily. So, John, you call in, so you've got a pile you want to burn, we'll come out and take a look at it. We'll issue a permit for that day. If you're going to burn again the next day, you've got to call us to come back. Because we've also run into the instance where somebody's had a five or six day burn for you know, a permit and they've called in each day, so they keep adding to the pile. So that one pile they say they're going to burn is turned into four or five piles and, um, you know, things like that. So, so the, the permit's really no different. We go out, take a look at it, verify that it's not, you know, something the size of this room, right. something that can be handled. Two, that we've got access into it. So we've had a couple where we've had no access if things have gone wrong. Um, it makes it really hard for us to, to get in. So. Um, verifying that, that they're not burning old barn boards that are full of paint or you know, OSB or things that aren't authorized uh, to burn. Okay, any other questions? There is a, yeah. okay, there is a, uh, 
permit form that was handed out at everybody's desk if you want to look at it. So, all right, Linda, you have another question? Yeah, I have a couple questions. Um, so at this point, Tim, mm -hmm. there would be no fee, Absolutely correct? not. Nope. And this isn't going to place some kind of uh, uh, manpower burden on your department. Nope. I can think of my neighbors that, you know, regular get, regularly get a permit for me to burn mm -hmm. a pile of leaves. Do you intend to inspect each and every time someone requests a burn permit? That, that's our that's our policy. That if somebody calls for burn permit, we're going to send somebody out there. Now it may be, you know, depending on where it's at, it might be myself or the assistant chief that runs mm -hmm. out there and issues a permit too. Um, mm -hmm. So our intent is, you know, to keep things in control and keep it in check so we know what's being burnt and where it's being burnt. Mm -hmm. uh, that yes, we'll, we'll mm -hmm. run out every one. Yeah, and I think we kind of did a test case. Um, the concern was that the fire department um, personnel or whatever would not get out there when they wanted to do the burn, but they were Johnny on the spot. So right. no matter what time. Again, you know, our guys are at the station 24-7, you know, call at 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, you know, we call at 4.30 or 5, the guys are still sleeping, I'm sure, if they may not get out there right away. But, you know, when the decision on, on, the, on your part, too, is, uh, we've historically, when we issued permits in other areas in the city, and uh, that we didn't have, we didn't allow people to start burning at six or seven o'clock at night, because that just creates too many problems. You know, passerbys think that there's a woods on fire or barns on fire and things like that. So we've historically done from daylight to you know dusk to dawn or dawn to dusk. Excuse me. Uh, try to have it out by this time of year by by thirty six o'clock at night. So it's not creating more problems. And then I know um, our clerk had mentioned this too, Amy mentioned it, what about burn barrels? Are we going to do permits for burn barrels or are we not going to allow burn barrels anymore? Burn barrels are completely separate. So if you look up under the code as far as open burning, but open burning compared to burn barrels, the burn barrels are regulated by the county. So you can have your burn barrel as long as you have your spark dresser and do what you're going to do. It's not considered open burning. So okay. and what we're looking at for the burn for the burn permits are are open burning. And we would still be okay. I think we started issuing those on an annual basis. Correct. Mm -hmm. So then I would be responsible for yep. issuing the burn barrels. Yeah, burn barrels are, are completely different from okay. this. This is open burning. Okay. So pile of brush or mm -hmm. whatever it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And they're always pr provided with a little handout too. Make sure it's screen. Mm -hmm. Make sure you pay attention to it. Again, no garbage or. Again, if you've got problems with somebody with burn barrels, if you, well, if you ask us, we'll gladly go and take a look at it if you're starting to have problems with certain ones. But well, I think the problem is, is when you issue them for a whole year, do they really do any good? Yeah. Well, there are people that do come in every year for that burn barrel oh, permit like, you know, so that they don't get in trouble in any way, shape, or form. So I, I do think that there are people who do abide by those rules. Okay. Especially if the neighbor would call and say, Absolutely. hey, you know, what's going on? And he can respond that, yes, I have a permit, and yes, I know what I should and should not be doing. So. I think our biggest thing is just kind of controlling the size of some of the piles that have been burned. We've run into some very sizable ones that have really become, you know, um, could be potentially um, hazardous or dangerous to other structures or properties and things like that. So. I don't think anybody's out there intentionally lying to the town, but you know, they say you're going to burn some brush and a few boards, depending on what all our interpretation is, is some brush and a few boards, so. Okay, any other questions? Okay. All right, thank you, Chief. Okay. <clears throat> One question. So there's no fees as of right now, which I'm assuming that won't change on the annual report. How is that going to get itemized out? And if somebody does get that burn permit and it does get out of control, does it get billed to the property owner or does it get billed to the town? We, we don't do any billing, John. So all of our services are paid through taxes. So the, the, what the town pays us for fire protection, that encompasses everything. So there's not, the only time that we ever charge for anything is if we have an accident on a state highway where we're allowed to bill back to the insurance company for um, oil dry and things like that or whatever it is. But other than that, we, we bill for absolutely nothing. It's all paid through protection fees. Okay, but if the permit is issued yep. and the fire gets out of control and you yep. guys are called, yep. how is that the town's responsibility and not the property owner's? What do you mean the town's responsibility? You just said that we get you get paid through taxes. 
if that burn pile gets out yep. of control on that property that yep. you guys issued a permit for, mm -hmm. and you guys are called back to that fire mm -hmm. to put it out, mm -hmm. why should the town have to pay for that? It's a flat fee, John, so whatever, whatever the fee is, okay. it's not broke down into every fire. I understand. Okay. Any other questions? Anything from the board? All right. Like I said, we uh, are going to finalize that at our next at our February meeting. So, if anybody has any more other questions, you can think of them and bring them back. So, all right. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Okay. Road. Road tour assessment. Um. Our quality of the roads varies significantly and historically as the town officials have changed so do the consistency of the road ratings and we have a PACER rating um, report run by the county or run by us and then the county did a PACER rating and they assessed our roads and they rated them very high so what was this is all about is we are thinking about having an expert come in and go over all of our <coughs> roads and get a, get a realistic PESA rating one time and then start out from there so that we could have a starting point for long-term capital plan for road repairs uh, we would get a baseline so I know um, Linda Waite had talked to Bay Lake Regional mm -hmm. Planning. Did you come back with it? Did they come back with anything? Mm -hmm. Would you like to sure. elaborate on that? Um, yes, yeah, so we have this proposal from Errors, um, an engineering firm. Um, and I specifically remember when we um, joined as a member of Bay Lake Regional Planning Commission that they offered to help us with our road ratings and Brandon Robinson, our representative there, said, yes, we have several staff that conduct pavement ratings. As long as the community is a member, there is no charge to have the ratings done because it is part of our regional transportation program funded by the DOT. Um, they do, however, only take a set number of communities for service on a first-come, first-served basis. So I definitely think we should explore that if it's a... You know, we're a member of Bay Lakes, we might as well utilize them. And um, yes, road construction is our biggest budget item, 275000 I think, for this year. And yes, we should in implement our long-term capital improvement plan and our infrastructure plan that we've been thinking about. So um, take it to heart and um, be serious about it. But I also think it is our town board supervisor's uh, responsibility to know what condition our roads are in and that we should be studying our PACER manuals. We are the ones that set the rating and um, like I said, I think it's part of our due diligence to know what shape our roads are in. Um, I know you're talking about maybe a one-time assessment by professionals, but there again, if it's part of our Bay Lake Regional uh, membership, why not take advantage of it? Um, we have nothing budgeted for this year to do a, an assessment, which it appears it could be quite costly between seven and fifteen thousand dollars. So, right. I, uh, well, I'm sorry, I, I'm supportive of the idea, I think it makes an awful lot of sense. Uh, we have um, uh, a row, the cost to the town of. Of, of maintaining our roads, the cost is going up significantly year on year. Uh, uh, anecdotally, it appears as though uh, uh, if you average the you know the roads by a mile repaired over the last several years, the cost of improving a mile of road has gone approximately from forty thousand to ninety thousand uh, dollars. We have, uh, uh, and that seems to be borne out by the. Uh, depreciations that we see. We have about, according to our depreciation schedule, which is part of our financial reports, uh, we have approximately uh, $6 million invested in roads. The, but you have to understand that 
the, we amortize that, we depreciate uh, the cost over a 20 year straight line depreciation. So the depreciation that's hitting the books now, which roughly is about $170,000, $180,000 a year, if you take into account the fact that, that uh, some of those numbers go back 20 years, or 15 years, uh, our depreciation, I think, significantly understates what the actual cost for improving those roads are going forward. Uh, so I think that uh, since we have how many miles of road? 75 miles of road? 86. 80 miles of road. Uh, at the rate we're going, and I know this year we've decided to boost the budget significantly, but for the last year's years, it's been about $200,000. That'll get us, you know, two miles of road, and at that rate, it'll be 40 years before we are able to cycle through all the roads, and that's <coughs> clearly unacceptable. Uh, I think that, uh, that the, 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 I think uh, what attracts me to this, uh, or what I find attractive about this proposal, is that we'll have a baseline assessment uh, based by uh, a well-regarded engineering company as to the condition of all of our roads. And the thing that struck me when, uh, when uh, John Colucci spoke to us mm -hmm. la the last time was, the way the, the, the apparently the the way the the the, uh, uh, the curve works is is that your, your roads deteriorate steadily, but then they get to a point that if you haven't taken any remedial care, uh, they they uh, become so distressed that your only only alternative is to replace them. A lot of the interim measures that we can implement cost anywhere from twelve to sixteen to eighteen thousand dollars a mile. If we have to reconstruct a road, it costs us about one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a mile. So our my hope is is that by coming up with a with an assessment of all of the roads, we can build a capex plan that will go out five to ten years, that will allow us to for those <coughs> roads that are in the that that are in the process of deteriorating, but they aren't deteriorating rapidly, we can get to them, implement a fix that might get another five or seven years. And the thing that drives me to do it, and I'm, and I'm repeating myself just a little bit, is that the cost of roads, of, of all of the road improvements we're making, it's, it's going up significantly. And so every dollar we spend on roads has got to yield the highest uh, value. The, the, the state pa PACER program, which asks us to uh, assess the condition of our roads based on, you know, uh, you know there are 10 rankings. You know, the subtlety as you go from one ranking to another, I think, uh, is, eludes us. I mean, you really have to know what you're doing. It, you know, I read it last night. You know, are there longitudinal uh, cracks? Are there lateral cracks? Uh, is it, uh, you know, are the cracks uh, uh, an eighth of an inch? Are you losing just your fine aggregate or your larger aggregate? I, I think that we, I think the 17,000, I should say, you know, that 7,000 to 15,000 dollars we're being asked to consider. And it, it, it's, a, it's undecided in my mind, even though I'm, I'm, I'm generally very receptive to the idea, it's undecided in my mind as to who we're going to use to do this. But, you know, even at, at, at $15,000, that's $3,000 a year if you get a plan that goes out five to, to eight years. And that $3,000 is a minuscule uh, uh, in comparison to the fact that in order for us to keep pace with, the, with our, with get ahead of the deterioration we're seeing in our roads, we're going to be spending regularly Two fifty, three hundred, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, and I think the peace of mind and the confidence we have in a capex plan uh, is worth uh, the, the, the money. And as I say, I don't need to make that decision now. But I wanted, right. to, I, I just wanted to give you my two cents worth. That's good. Well, I think we're already paying Bay Lake Regional Planning, you know, a pretty hefty due. So I mean, I would wouldn't have a problem going with them. I mean, then it would be just the dues that we pay, you know, already. I, I, I looked at what Ayers uh, uh, has, has, has suggested, and they're a very well-regarded engineering firm. Right. Uh, and they said that we can either go, uh, we can either adopt the PACER system that's generally used throughout the state of Wisconsin, and that it divides your ass to assess your roads on a 10-point scale. 
there is a there, there's a there's another test called a, a PCI test, which requires the use of cameras that makes an historical record of the, of the roads and does a fair amount of analytics on the roads themselves, which it's 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 got very little to do with it's it's not. You know, it's not a, a person's reaction to a visual assessment. It's a little more involved than that. I, I, I as I say, I want to spend, uh, I don't want to spend one dollar more than we have to, but I want to get something <coughs> that will give us a clear idea of how we want to, uh, of what our CapEx is going to be in this for the next, you know, eight years. I mean, when, when you consider the fact that, I mean, the, the, the town, like the county, like the city, I mean, you know, if, if you were to, if we had to rebuild all of the infrastructure, all of the buildings, everything we've got, you know, right now our historical cost for all of that is eight and a half million dollars, we could easily be talking 25, 30 million dollars. I mean, we've got an awful lot of physical plant that we have to maintain. And what's not built into this is even the additional costs of maintaining our bridges. We aren't even addressing that. Now, I'm not saying our roads are bad, but I'm saying that if we continue to insist that, and we should, that we want first class roads, we need to understand how, what we need to do in order to maintain them. Enough said. I'm right. sorry. Tony? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> first of all, we're paying the regional planning. Will they do this road assessment as part of our membership? Yes. We don't have to pay extra. Well, why are we even talking? I understand these guys know what they're doing. Well, dang it, if we're already paying somebody, we're a member, they'll do it for, you know, included. <clears throat> I got a real hard time. You know, another 7000 bucks here, $8,000 there, you're spreading out. Before we know it, paying all these guys, these so-called experts to come in and do the job that we ourselves could do. Now, we're not experts <clears throat> in everything. But, well, dang it, we got some pretty nice roads. And it's always been the town board looking at them getting a hold of either uh, Northeast or the county. <clears throat> they come in and tell us what we should do. So I know, you know, we're not all road experts. But we've been keeping our roads pretty good, and I'm all over the place. We've got some of the better roads, you know, the townships, okay? Sure. So the old thing, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <clears throat> so they were doing a good job there. I got a hard time spending another seven, eight, ten thousand bucks. Give it to another group to come in and tell us what to do if this regional planning <clears throat> can do it for free and then in turn then we talk to John Kologi or whoever from Northeast and they're giving us advice because they're experts. Another idea I had, maybe it's harebrained, we've got some gentlemen that have worked for the county for 30, 40 years in the town that have worked on <coughs> the roads. When we do our road tours you know, in the spring, <clears throat> Could we maybe ask a couple of these guys? Would you want to come along? Look at these roads and give us some ideas. These guys are out there, you know, dumping the asphalt in, doing the paving. You know, they still know what they you know. <clears throat> That's just my point, you know what I mean? I just got a real hard time throwing more money out there, you know, when we could be. Oh yeah, because like, it would come out of the park's budget. Pardon? It'd come out of your Well, of budget. course it's gonna parks come out of the park's budget, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that's my two cents on it. Um, yeah, I agree with um, Mr. Hain. We do have retired highway people that live in our town and invite them along. But back to the PACER system, I'm going to guess that was implemented about 10 years ago. Every municipality in the state, anybody that has roads, is required to complete that online survey and to update their annual or their biannual Whistler report, which is a Wisconsin inventory of roads or whatever, if you don't complete it, your, your transportation aids are affected. Okay. We did have one town in, in Door County that did not complete that report <coughs> and probably didn't receive about, I don't know, $37,000. So there again, that's, you know, the board's responsibility to do that. We've, we're familiar with PACER and <coughs> perhaps a one-time assessment what do we have to lose if we have Bay Lake do it? Right. If we don't like the results, then think about <clears throat> hiring an engineer firm. So I So what I, I understand, agree. did I hear you say, uh, maybe I heard it wrong, if we don't get involved with this PACER program? We are involved. Oh, we I mean, have so been involved for 10 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
That's we don't have a choice in the matter. Yeah. But I mean, they're not forcing us to go with somebody. Absolutely okay. not. Okay. No. Good. You've seen the rating Thanks. sheets when we go on right. inspections. Yeah. Amy has right. them, or, mm -hmm. or I'm doing them. So, okay. um, right. no, it's been an effect for a long time. I think this is, you know, like they said, if we wanted a one time thorough assessment with this pavement condition index that goes deep into the distressed cracks and really lays it out as to how the road, what is the makeup of this road and what do you see for deterioration in the next few years or whatever, rather than PACER is a visual, okay? It's a surface. It's what you see. I, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I'm done. As I said, I'm not wedded to any particular one, but I want to get one that, that truly gives us a baseline assessment of the condition of the roads because we're right. going to build a capital plan around this for the next several years. Once we understand what the, and, and to, just so everyone understands, under the, the, the PACER program that we submit to the state of Wisconsin, we have almost, I want to say 200 road segments we're asked to uh, generally oh, assess. To, is it, right. it is a mm -hmm. very comprehensive mm -hmm. assessment that the state expects every town in the, right. in, in the state to, uh, uh, to produce. And the idea is, is to take some of the mystery out of uh, where you're, what, what should you be focusing on? My concern is, is that, and I, I don't want to, it's clear that there's a general sense that this is a, a good idea and we're not mm -hmm. asking to make, to take action, of course. But I do think, I, I just want to hold open the possibility that if we do go down this path, that we do look at the, what might we get from zoom, zooming, mm -hmm. by using someone from Bay Lakes, versus uh, uh, you know what what an engineering firm uh, might offer, and I, I I understand that you know we've been doing it for a long time, and I do think we've got very good roads. I mean I've had people come in from out of state, and I've told them about our our trails with their roads, and I had one person look at me and he said, "What are you talking about?" He said, "These are great roads." Uh, I, uh, <coughs> I but I think they're good roads because we have historically made the commitment to to invest in the roads, but I would I think that in order to help us, it might not be a bad idea to get someone from an engineering firm to, quite frankly, add, tell us why he thinks that it's worth an extra several thousand dollars for us to do what he's su uh, suggesting. Is that, I would want to see a presentation from both, from I think you're right. and Eras. I agree. Or Eras. Okay. Okay. So. There's a lot of information out on the internet, so I know Dan found this on the internet, the PCI one. So, um, so do we want we want a presentation from Bay Lake and from an engineering firm too? I mean, I I don't know. I'm with Tony. We're already paying Bay My Lake. Mom would pay. I think what do we have to lose? I mean, if we just, delay it by one year or six months. Well, because it, it's a first come first serve with Bay Lake, right. and if we miss out I'd on like that, I'd like to get on the list. I guess. Right. I don't know. So, I mean, we could see how far off we are rating them. I mean, they've already rated a lot of roads where, you know, we somewhat guess at it, you know. I mean, there's a, there is a, we're being asked to make a qualitative assessment of the roads. And, right. and year over year, you're not quite sure whether or not you've done it in a uniform fashion. But I think we should have Balex come in and get them here as soon as we can and, and ask them. Can we reserve a position with them? Uh, Do you want me to ask about Let's see, our February meeting. Um, we probably won't have a meeting in March. Right. April. Uh, why don't I just send Brandon an email and say, what does your schedule look like? This is our meeting schedule. Would you be able to send someone to talk about mm -hmm. pavement assessment? Okay. How's that? Sounds sure. good. Thank you. All right. We have a uh, web design presentation. Is that what you're here for? Okay. So just you can follow along with the presentation. I'm Holly Wagner. I work with Tweet. Thank you, Holly. I'm a business account manager. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity for letting us come and present to you this evening on the web design. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> 
Um, Mike's going to go through the web design theme. Tweak specifically, we're uh, right in Sturgeon Bay. We're in the Door County Economic Development building up there. We went at, we're in our sixth season. We offer a variety of web design, obviously, social media, uh, videography, photography, graphic design. So we do several things. We've got a great team. We have four full-time employees. Mike and I are two of those. And then we also have two contractors that help us with other um, needs as they come, come around. Currently, we're working with about 50 active people in Door County, businesses and organizations. Um, Mike has built a variety of web, websites for many places in Door County. Um, and, and outside of Door County. It's not just Door County for businesses. Correct. Correct. So, um, what we desire to be different is that our great services come at the most affordable cost that we can do for you. So, we custom build our uh, contacts for everybody based on what you need. So if there's something in the um, proposal here that doesn't work, we can take it out. We can add things as you need. So we're always happy to do that. So Mike German, the web design yeah. aficionado. <laughs> so, would you mind maybe going that way so you can talk to you know, when your back isn't there, everybody. Sure, you so betcha. everybody, is that okay? You betcha. Yes, you're not a problem at all. Yeah, <laughs> so, thanks. Um, so as uh, Holly mentioned, um, We've been building websites for a number of years now. I, this is my third year at um, Tweak, and I had a number of years prior to that at another uh, local marketing agency. Um, and my role has basically been uh, building websites. Um, so Amy, we got in touch. Uh, we're just finishing up the Sturgeon Bay Police Department's website. We're going to launch, be launching that very soon. Um, so she was kind of interested in what uh, we could do for the, the town as far as uh, the pot potential of uh, doing a new website. Um, we just put down some thoughts uh, based on what Amy and I had kind of chatted about. Um, and uh, one of the biggest things uh, would be reviewing the look of the site um, to really make it look like Sebastopol. Um, and making sure that it's friendly for all devices. So not just computers, but also tablets and uh, mobile devices. Because of course, you know, everyone's out of their phones now searching for, uh, for different items and, and and whatnot. So uh, we wanted to make sure that the new site, people would be able to easily find agendas, uh, minutes, and things like that um, across all those devices. Um, we use a content management system called WordPress to build a site into. Um, that's a free program that basically we build it on, um, on or within WordPress. And then uh, there's no extra software that would be needed uh, to make ed uh, edits to the website. So um, town staff would uh, get a login, a separate login. Um, they would be able to go in and, and make edits, um, upload minutes, PDFs, change up images and whatnot as needed. Um, along with that, um, there are a number of add-ons that you can build into WordPress. Um, some of those that you know, we would utilize for you would be uh, a calendar and um, that way you can make sure you know, all the meetings are on, on there and whatnot. Um, anything that might pertain to school that would also be on the town calendar could be on there. Um, and the calendar that we've been using, there is a paid version, uh, which I mentioned in here. Um, it's a uh, $90 per year add-on. Um, but that adds some features as far as being able to um, add events that are recurring. So it might be uh, meetings that happen monthly on a certain day and whatnot it would allow the staff to uh, go in and add, it, add those um, a lot quicker than having to go in each month and adding those. Um, here. So looking on um, page two, um, on the back of the page, first page, uh, we just kind of did a general overview. These are a lot of items that uh, we would include with um, our websites, um, helping set up the hosting, um, installation of WordPress, and then we, we custom build um, the site on top of that, as I mentioned, within a, a theme, customize it to, um, to match the town. Um, we would be then setting up categories to be able to set up meeting minutes and whatnot. Um, and then uh, the one, or the uh, calendar, that will cover the one year subscription um, for that upgraded uh, calendar. After that, it would be uh, a $90 fee, as I mentioned. 
And that would be just built directly to the town. Um, another thing that we would make sure that we include in the website that, you know, it's really important would be Google Analytics, which is going to allow you to see which pages are being um, most visited on the site, how long people are on there, um, you know, different towns that people are visiting from. So it might not be just Sturgeon Bay or, or uh, it might be elsewhere in the county that people are trying to find information. Um, so we do set that up too. Um, and then we do some search engine optimization, which uh, helps the content on your site be found um, more easily when people are searching. Um, one other thought that Amy had, uh, had brought up, uh, which is in the green box um, on the bottom of that page, um, she had asked about possibly being able to automate um, like meeting notices and but not going out. Um, our thought to that was that there is an e-news service called MailChimp. Um, it's free for, uh, I believe it's 2,000 contacts and up to 12,000 emails per month. Otherwise, they do have paid, um, paid tiers that you can, um, can take advantage of. Um, but what we, what we could do is hook up the website so that when um, like a, a meeting was added to the website, that would then be sent out to a contact list within that email program. Um, so you, you would have to um, have a collection of some emails that we would set up and add to that constant contact list. But then we could include on the website um, a sign-up form where other people can sign up in the future then. Um, our cost does not um, include the cost of, or the, the price of hosting, um, but that's typically between $180 and $240 a year. Um, and that we set up right through the town, but it would be under the town's name, not us. So if you ever had uh, questions or, or had issues with the hosting, you know, we would definitely be there to help support it. Um, but everything is under, under the town's name. Uh, the domain name too would be another additional cost. Um, and that's an annual cost. I believe it's probably about $15 to $18 a year for that. Um, we do, um, as I mentioned, when we build the website in WordPress, um, the staff will be able to up update um, content and whatnot. We're always available right. if you know something came up and they're unable to update, we need to troubleshoot, or if they just don't have time, you know, they need something up there quickly. Um, all you have to do is either send us an email uh, or, or give us a call and we're more than willing to help out with that. So, um, Just to uh, list a couple of sites that you can take a look at. Um, on the back of um, the last page, um, Surgery Bay Police Department, as I mentioned, that will be launching probably within the next week or two. Uh, Boys and Girls Club of Door County, we've been working with them for, I think it's been about six months or so. Uh, Northern Sky Theater, uh, Jackson Court Area Business Association, um, and then a couple others listed there too. Um, so I guess it, I, if anyone has any questions, you know, I'd love to answer those for you. I'm sure we all do. Um, uh, thank you, Mike. Um, okay. Does your bid include any training at this point? I see you offer training at $75 per hour. So is any training included in that bid? We did not in, in, in this, but we definitely could adjust it to include that. Uh, typical training session, it's about one to two hours. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, too, we might do the initial training. And then, uh, you know, the staff kind of gets in there and starts making updates and they say, okay, now how do we do this and that? So they may need another short training session after that. And you always, someone is always available by phone or email if we have a problem? Uh, normally, we, we aren't open 24 hours a day. Right. But, you know, at... Normal business yes, hours. Yes, yep. Okay. And then... Um, uh, up to 25 pages. I don't remember how many pages we have right now. I don't know. He's I'm going to guess there's about yeah, 25. There's, there's roughly around 25. Okay, and if we needed to add pages? Uh, we can definitely adjust that. Okay. Um, 
So it's no big deal if no, we have no, 30 no. pages. Yeah, no, and, and WordPress doesn't have any limitations or the hosting on how many pages they have and whatnot. Uh, you know, it's just organizing it all ahead of time and whatnot. So you would come in and completely redo our website? Yep. What we um, make it more user friendly? Yep. So our, our typical process of what we would do, um, we would work either with the board or if you wanted to form like a, a website committee, you um, know that works well. Um, we like working with maybe three to five people uh, to kind of come up with the, the initial look and whatnot. Um, you know, sometimes we ask for other websites that um, that you like, and we can kind of use that for inspiration and whatnot. Um, from there, we then code the template, and at that point we would meet with uh, the committee or the board again, um, go through you know what we have, um, our, our thoughts behind all that. Um, and then once that template's written up, that's when we start taking the content. Um, we can either copy it from the existing site or you know, if there's new copy, new text and pictures, we then start building those pages. Um, My sense is, we probably, in order to get in the room, we'll probably have to create a committee uh, and at least three alternatives. Wisconsin Towns Association has strongly promoted a new website uh, design firm, uh, and, uh, and then we've got a current uh, uh, firm that does it, which I, I, I think there's a general sense that we could do much better, uh, that we, could, we should probably significantly enhance the our, our web page, but I think we need to be able to get an idea of you know, what are the what are the deficiencies we've got, and I think he's done a very good job at identifying the problems we've got now, and then how do we build for the future? Because I know Laddie has had some thoughts about people in order to get uh, access to uh, video recordings, uh, historical video recordings. So it would be it would be ever so nice if people could go into our website and then go from there directly to, to, to the video recordings. But it would be nice to have, we need to understand what it is uh, each of these entities is offering us and, and get an idea of what the individual costs are. And quite frankly, at the end of the day, how user friendly will this be? No, definitely, and, and that's part of our thought too when we are building a site, is we want to make it user friendly, not just for the end user, the people using it, but also the staff adding content and whatnot. Like um, you know, we want to make sure to say that content is uh, organized well and easy to find. Um, that's, you know, part of it would be uh, maybe looking at the staff to make sure the navigation menu, we could give recommendations on you know, what primary links would be, and if there are items under that, like drop down items, um, you know, what are those items and, and what should they be. So, um, and then, like I say, you know, it's, it, a website's an ever evolving um, tool, so it's not going to be something that can't change in the future. Um, you know, as, as things come up, you can definitely add more information and tools to it. Okay. okay, I'm looking at your brochure here, Mike hmm? and Holly. And under video, you have YouTube presence. So you probably know that we have our Sebastopol cable channel, and we do post YouTubes, mm -hmm. thanks to um, Laddie, who does an excellent job. So if you were to do our website, could YouTube be a little bit more user friendly as far as accessing rather than going to a separate link? Um, you could definitely. Laddie could probably explain that better. Well, I'm not sure what you're getting at, Linda, but uh, there are many ways it could be done. Well, right now on our website, we have a link under the cable um, pig channel page or whatever, if you want to see YouTubes or whatever, click on here. I'm just what? thinking if that would have a, a bigger present, presence on our website that more people would know that, hey, you can watch the town board last month or whatever. What I would suggest is, is a thumbnail of each video uh, where whoever is being hosted. Right now we don't have that. We only have a, a, a text link. Right. Uh, if that, I'm not sure how much we put up there actually. But we could put a thumbnail. I'm sure. Yeah, that, what I would actually suggest is embedding the videos right into the website. That way you're not leaving the website. So, um, you know, if a, a board is aired, uh, or a board meeting is aired, um, and that's uploaded to YouTube, you can actually embed that right into the website. 
um, they can view it on there. They don't even have to go to the YouTube channel. And, um, so you know, there too, it's, it's... Well, if you have the resources of YouTube, that would be a great idea. Mm -hmm. We could have to talk about that. <laughs> YouTube is always upgrading and mm -hmm. adding features, and, and I doubt that a small company could could handle that, but you can take advantage of piggyback on YouTube, which is what we do now. Sure. Sure. All right, any more questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there might be advantages to dealing with some of the local Sure. Moving right along. Next item is the 2019 legislative days. There's a survey out right now that is live. Mm -hmm. And um, anybody can put any questions on there for Dora Kiwani County. Um, the, uh, the issues for the legislation day should be local with specific impact for Dora Kiwani counties. Should not be controversial and should be focused upon issues that exceed local capacity to solve the challenge. So, and the website is quite lengthy. Do we have that up on our website? Speaking of websites. No, I definitely can put it up there, no. Okay. So if you have any questions specifically to Dora Kiwani County, they will be acting on that uh, for their steering committee. So. January 25th, they would like, would like them in. Oh yeah, January, there it is. I think Jan that's Friday. Friday, January 25th, um, they are going to have the recommendations. So if you got any burning issues, you better get them in fast. Okay, no ordinances. Um, the Town of Sevastopol account balances. Amy, you have a report on that. Well, the financial reports are in front of you, so if you have any questions on those, please let me know. Um, but um, we did receive our first quarter of the general transportation aids. We also paid our first quarter uh, for fire protection to the city of Sturgeon Bay. We did send out our settlements for the, gen for the January settlement, and the first half of taxes are due to the county treasurer, Jay Zahn, by January 31st. Yes, Lynn. Well, we also have a slightly new format, correct, Amy? We do okay. have a format, so, a yeah. different format. So if you have any questions, please let me know. We did um, separate the designated accounts from the more lucrative, um, I don't know what you would call them, um, non-designated. The So we have actual balances in correct. each of our bank accounts, and then we also have how those are allocated per designated mm -hmm. or restricted or general funds, so. Nice. Okay, thank you. Um, in your packet you have the, the budget versus actual for January through December 2018. Two pages. The transition list by date. need a motion on the financial reports, please. Okay, I was just getting to that. Perfect. <laughs> Can I have a... Before we do that, I just want, uh, had one question I wanted to pose to uh, Amy. Sure. Uh, Amy tells me that we're going to exit 2018 with a, a modest uh, account payable balance. Yes. Okay. And you estimate it's what? It's... Um, off, I sent you those numbers offhand. I'm not... It, it seemed don't... like it was only a couple of thousand dollars. Absolutely, it was relatively yes. Nominal it, it was comparison. nominal. To last year's correct okay. i think that's it i think that's helpful okay can i have a motion on the financial report i move the adoption of the financial report. <clears throat> motion by jim i'll second it second by tony all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed okay it carries Oh. 
I haven't got to that yet. Oh yeah, I did. Yep. Um, can I have a motion on the approval of the voucher bills and claims? Has everybody had a chance to look at the voucher bills and claims? Mm -hmm. All right, then I will uh, move for approval of the voucher bills and claims submitted for the period December 18th, 2018 through January 21st, 2019. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Same. Motion carries. Okay, are there any oral committee or commission reports? <clears throat> Uh, the only thing I have is uh, uh, Mark went down to the uh, dam tonight, checked it. All the boards are in. We're uh, within the parameters of where we want it to be. So, <clears throat> or, you know, he's going down there now. Because I can't get down there. He goes down about once a week mm -hmm. and checks it. Uh, <clears throat> if we get any snow, well, we've got to get rain really for it to rise. But I'm going down. But we're doing good. We're borderline. We might pull a board yet, just to ensure against the big ice shove. But uh, he's gonna wait till it warms up a little bit. But we might pull one board just to be on the safe side. Okay. Can I say something? Yes. The Door County Coastal Byway. We are up for our 10-year renewal. Um, if we have anything that we're going to change in our town of Sevastopol portfolio or any um, enhancements that we could add to it that will give us a few more points with the scenic byway program and the DOT. Um, so perhaps Mr. Nellen and I could sit in with Amy and sure. I think I had mentioned the parking lot at Fort Dunes Lake access might be something you want to add to that? Anything that we can uh, do to enhance uh, the tourist ac aspect of the you know, new winery? Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Good idea. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So, well, now look at that. Next we have the county <laughs> board report from District 14 Supervisor Linda Wade. The county board is meeting tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We have a hefty agenda with some major items. Um, the Forestville Dam and Mill Pond. Um, there's been a, a study over the last couple years as to what to do with that pond. Um, our soil and water department is recommending a two-year drawdown. So um, that is on the agenda. So we'll see if there's going to be a vote for action or maybe postpone for additional study. I'm not sure. Um, acceptance of some land on, the Was on Washington Island for a potential um, emergency services, fire <coughs> department, ambulance, sheriff's department, something like that. Uh, acquisition of the Yonkers Furniture Building is on the agenda. Um, to see if that might uh, be purchased for further expansion of our Door County Historical Museum downtown. And then the government remodeling project. We're going to look at that, spending <coughs> 600000 on some remodeling on the various levels. Again, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. All are welcome. Weather permitting, I guess. <laughs> I do have a, I do, I do have a question. What, what do they hope to accomplish through that uh, two-year drawdown of the mill pond? I, I mean, is it to address sediment contamination? Or, there, or is, there is a list of items. I would suggest you go to the Door County website, and if you look at the supervisor packet for January 22nd, you will see uh, a report in there. There's, I believe there's also reports posted to the soil and water, water um, department site. And so you can, okay. it's a very comprehensive study, believe me. Okay, thank you. Okay, licenses and permits. We have the December 2018 safe bill report. We have the buildings that are being built, what buildings, when they took out a permit. 
only one in the town of Sebastopol. Yep. One zoning permit. Blessing. Okay, the correspondence. Um, we have a UW extension, um, zoning board of adjustment and appeal workshop, Wednesday, February 13th, 2019, 9 a.m. to 12 a.m. at Hotel Northland in Green Bay. If anybody's interested, please let Amy know or fill out the page on the back. And Okay, um, the payment for general transportation aid quarterly payment is in the correspondence. The notification of tree cutting. And I was, oh, and county T uh, for family trust. Um, and you have the Door County Real estate property listings, 2018 tax return summary. That was quite interesting. They mm -hmm. had different percentages. I like the second page where they had what percentage was resident, what percentage wasn't resident. Yes. I, I noticed that too. And there, nine out of 17 municipalities have a higher percent of non resident ownership. Mm -hmm. so. so that was quite a nice little packet. Mm -hmm. And the average um, home price was interesting, too. Yes. It's quite a range. Quite a range. So they have the uh, uh, calendar year 2019 final collection for general transportation aids. And our monthly report uh, for the rentals. Everybody that uh, rents a property has, has listed. Uh, Antique Power Association, Northeastern Wisconsin, got their uh, conditional use permit to build their 50 foot by 120 foot storage building. And a wonderful Sturgeon Bay Fire Department December 2018 fire report by Assistant Fire Chief. Kaylin Montevideo. And the second page is for what training they did, what maintenance they did. All right. Take care of that. The announcements are first half, first half of your taxes are due uh, January 31st, 2019. Uh, Board of Supervisors meeting is February 18th. 2019. We will have a primary election, town board supervisors, that's February 19th. Polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. Are there any um, agenda items that should be put on for next month? I just want to say additionally, we will have a League of Women Voters having their um, election forum on January 29th. It's a Tuesday here at the town hall. It starts at 6.30. Um, it's going to be the five candidates for the Board of Supervisor position, um, and that corresponds with the primary. The snow date. The snow date is going to be Thursday, um, what is that, the 31st? 31st. Here's hoping we don't have that. Yes. Anything else? Um, agenda. Okay, I know this has kind of been put on the back burner, and we talked about it at our budget hearing. But audience, um, the availability of the audience to see what we're talking about. <laughs> um, we had talked about either a big screen TV or on the projector. I talked to one of the town of Jackson Port supervisors. You know, they just did major remodeling <coughs> on their town hall. And they are going to have the capability. Um, they have several big screen TVs where they will be posting the meeting contents so that when we do have an audience, you know, it would be nice that they can see what we're talking about. I know it's a board meeting, but, you know, just a suggestion. I don't know if that's the communications committee. Well, I think I, I, 
It, it did come up before right. the the uh, the Pig Channel Committee, and uh, we uh, and Laddie had provided us some detail, uh, some costs uh, because of. Uh, <laughs> this doesn't come as a surprise because of. Uh, the fact that we're going to put so much money, or we're planning to put so much money into roads this year, we, um, uh, we, we decided that we would have, uh, in fact, uh, a no increase budget uh, for, uh, for the pig channel as well as for uh, electronic media. Uh, I too would like, I mean, it, it would be nice if people in the audience could see what we're looking at because I think it makes it less of a mystery. So we're getting off the subject, but do you want that on the No, agenda it doesn't have item? to be for next month, but you know, just not put off for too long. And I think we could accomplish it fairly reasonably, well, either either using a projector or. I mean, we could put it on for next month and discuss it at next month's meeting. When everyone's here, that's probably yeah. a good mm -hmm. idea. Here's what otherwise, what it's going to be out into yeah. Mar April. Mm -hmm. Why don't we? Why don't we get an idea of what? Uh, how we can accomplish that at the least cost, uh, not necessarily mm -hmm. what you would like to have, uh, uh, but if there's, is there uh, an interim arrangement? Sure. Um, we, you know, we, one of the reasons why when we built the, the, uh, the capital budget for, 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 for that committee is because, you know, we are looking at a significant expense going out perhaps as little as a year and a half, two years from now for a video recorder. And uh, so we wanted to start putting money aside for that, so that we weren't we weren't. Uh, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. if I may, uh, I sure. would like to suggest that any interested supervisors, anybody else, uh, wants to investigate this. There's a, a golden opportunity sometime in May. I'm not sure the exact date. Camera Corny has has a uh, oh. convention in Green Bay. It's free, and they even give you a bag of goodies sometimes. So. Uh, they have demonstrations of all the gadgets we can ever possibly imagine, most of which we can't afford. But be able to see up front, hands on, what's available this is a wonderful opportunity. We don't have this very often. We can't go to New York City for demonstrations. So, anyone would like to go to that, uh, let me know sometime soon because I'm going to ask for sign up sometime this spring. Okay. Well, we have a digital packet. We're looking at it right now. So it's already in digital form. Mm -hmm. Right. To download this onto a USB or whatever and stick it into a projector. Uh -huh. I mean. We're getting way off the subject. I know. I'm Wait sorry. We're getting way off the okay, subject. Okay, sorry. Agenda items for <laughs> next month. Would you like it on the agenda? <laughs> I'll yes leave or, it up to Yes or no? I will leave it up to the communications <laughs> committee. There we go. To talk about it when yeah. the whole committee is here. Yeah, well, yes, it's an agenda item. Go. Good. Okay. Uh, there's only one thing left <laughs> on the agenda. I move to adjourn. Is there a second? A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Motion's 